What's up SLPs? I have a very exciting thing to share with you based on a lot of questions I've gotten from my fellow speech pathologists. We are gonna talk all about the speech apron. Four years ago, I started working in a full inclusion preschool program within my school district. And this was my first time not only working with preschoolers, but also working in a full inclusion preschool program that really valued and relied on a lot of collaboration and me being in the classroom, pushing in to service my students versus pulling them out for individual or small group services. I still did a lot of it and I still do, but I do really enjoy co-teaching with my teachers and being a resource right in the classroom because it allows me to see my student working with other peers, not just the peers that I maybe pull them with to speech, but it also gives me an opportunity to work with the staff when we're modeling things and when we are playing and doing language-based play, all of the things. It's so cool to see them in that classroom routine and that classroom environment. When I first started pushing in, I would bring in a big tub of materials. And I quickly realized it was kind of unnecessary. There were already plenty of things in the classroom that I could use. However, I did want to be able to have some quick things that were necessary for my students, whether it be visuals or any kind of sensory supports, whatever it might be. I also realized with some of my students, especially the ones that I walked for a little bit of time, you know, a distance to my speech room when I picked them up from class, we were spending a good three to five minutes sometimes on the walk from their class. Preschoolers have little legs. It took us a little bit more time and it was really awesome to take those walks and you know, talk about what we see when we're outside and get some language in that way, maybe sing a song. But after a while, you can only talk about the same bush so many times and I wanted to have some novelty in that since we did have a lot of time spent walking to the speech room. Once in my speech room, I quickly realized how important it was for me to be on the floor playing with the kids instead of always at the tabletop. Sometimes it works, but for the most part with my students, we're on the floor playing. So I wanted to have something that would help me have access to things that I always use like visuals, but would be on me and not the standard lanyard visuals. I just lose those. So I learned this awesome hack of having an apron. One of my other speech pathologist friends who was also in the preschool program and is also in the preschool program with me to this day, came up with this idea of having a speech apron. So we all made them. And I love it because I can totally customize this to what I need. So you can see here that I have yes, no icons, use those all the time. I have song choices and I also have some basic visuals that might go a long way for functional communication. Potty, maybe how we want to be greeted for the day, go, stop. So things that we can maybe utilize in play, utilizing with greetings, and also the songs. Everybody loves songs. I also love that I have the pockets. I can keep some fun sensory objects in here. Also, this might be a helpful transition tool. It might remind the child, you know, they get to take this when they come to speech. Maybe we have some mini objects in there too, um, if that's gonna be something that is either preferred by the child or just, you know, a helpful, a helpful part to the session. I love it too because hand sanitizer. There's my pen. More visuals because you can always change these out, right? There's always room for more visuals. I should have a shirt that says that. And of course, chapstick. I was actually wondering where this specific chapstick went. Now you might be saying, Marie, where can I get the speech apron? I have linked the cocktail waitress apron on my Amazon storefront for you to find. For the visuals, I make these on Boardmaker. This is a program that my district has paid for me to have. I can't use it on any outside computers. You just utilize whatever you want. You can even do Google Images. Nobody's, nobody's against that. What I do is I buy pretty strong Velcro dots and I um, put them on laminated cards. It's probably best if you use cardstock. I didn't, so I mounted my pictures on um, construction paper to make them a little bit thicker because the kids will tear these. I like having this because the kids can tear them off. They're just things they can hold in their hands if they choose to. I don't require them to tear them off when they're answering questions. It's more just for me to be able to change them out, but the kids like to 
rip them off and that is fine with me, I don't care. Another thing to think about too, you're gonna wanna use some kind of maybe Gorilla Glue or strong glue on the rough part of the Velcro that you're putting on your apron because that is going to come off with the regular sticky adhesive that's on the Velcro, it just won't stay on the fabric. So just be thinking about that, you'll want that too. But that is my speech apron. Again, everything that I use besides the icons are linked, so you are more than welcome to go through my Amazon store, which is linked below, and check all of that out. If you see this video, make your apron, use your apron, love your apron, or don't love your apron, show me, tag me. I wanna share your story about the apron. You can do that on Instagram at thinksmorris. I would love to see how you use your apron and maybe get some ideas from you. All right, have a great week. I'll see you on the next one.